Hello mathematicians! This video is going to take a look at how we can bring together a lot of the concepts that we saw here in chapter 3 to graph an ugly looking function like this function here. 1 over x to the 6th minus 8x to the 5th plus 17x to the 4th plus 8x cubed minus 45x squared plus 27. We can graph this quite nicely by bringing together several concepts that we saw in this chapter. The first concept we're going to use, step number one, is we're going to factor the denominator. And we know from the rational root theorem that the factors of 27 are 1, 3, 9, and 27. And the factors of 1 out front is 1, which means the possible roots are 1 over 1, plus or minus, 3 over 1, 9 over 1, and 27 over 1, plus or minus. So those are the things we're going to try and divide out using synthetic division from our denominator. So first, let's start with, uh, let's just take a positive 1 in the corner. The coefficients we have are 1, negative 8, 17, 8, negative 45. And did you notice there's 0 x's in there? Don't lose the 0 x's, 0 and 27. We can bring this down then. 1 times 1 is 1, gives us negative 7. Times 1 is negative 7, gives us 10. Times 1 is 10, plus 8 is 18. Times 1 is 18, minus 45 is negative 27. Times 1 is negative 27, brings down a negative 27 times 1 is negative 27, which gives us a 0. Hey, that worked. 1 divided out. We might be suspicious if we have a multiple root, like a double root or a triple root, so let's try the 1 again and see if it works. Now we only need to look at the new terms because the 0 is kind of taken care of. So we've got one fewer term this time, which is nice. Bring down the 1, gives us 1. Minus 7 is negative 6, times 1 is negative 6, plus 10 is 4, times 1 is 4, plus 18 is 22, times 1 is 22, minus 27 is negative 5, times 1 is negative 5, and you can see this is not going to work. So 1 is done. Let's back up and try something else. Maybe we should try um, the 3. Let's see if the 3 comes out. Bring down the 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Minus 7 is negative 4. Times 3 is negative 12. Plus 10 is negative 2. Times 3 is negative 6. Plus 18 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. Minus 27 is 9. Times 3 is 27. And gives us a 0. So 3 does work. We might suspect that 3 is a double root, so we'll try 3 again. Bring down the 1 times 3 is 3, gives us negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Plus negative 2 is negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, gives us negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, which gives us a 0. And so we do have a double root of 3. Might it be a triple root? Let's try taking out the 3 again. Bring down the 1 times 3 is 3, minus 1 is 2, times 3 is 6, minus 5 is 1, times 3 is 3, and we get 0. And so we finally got our third 3, and what's nice now is there's only 3 terms left, so we can call that 1x squared plus 2x plus 1, and we can factor that to x plus 1 squared, or x plus 1 times x plus 1, if you prefer. So if we put that all together, remember those are going to be x equals 1, x equals 3, x equals 3, and x equals 3. Subtracting 1 gives us x minus 1 for a factor. Subtracting 3 gives us x minus 3, and it was there three times as a factor. And then we also found x plus 1 squared was a factor. 
Now we could have found these in any order. You might have tried one, then three, and then negative one, and then one, three, and then whatever. What's important is when you get to the end, you group together all the squares and cubes, and that completes step one. We have factored the denominator. Step two then, is we can graph the denominator. I'm going to scroll down just so that I can see that better. I can see that the x-intercepts from that denominator are x equals 1, x equals 3 is a triple root. I'm going to put a little note that it's a triple root. And x equals negative 1 is a double root because it's squared. I also can find the y-intercept by letting the x equal 0. And if the x equals 0, we'll have negative 1 times negative 3 cubed times 1 squared. And I'll get my trusty calculator to help me with that. Negative 1 times negative 3 cubed times 1 squared is 27. So that means I know that the y-intercept is 27. So we'll just put 27 way up there, not to scale. And 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So we got a y-intercept at 27, x-intercept at 1, at 3, which I'll put a little note that that's a cubic. And at negative 1, and I'll make a little note that that's squared, I also see that there is 1 plus 3 plus 2. This is like a positive x to the 6. So it's going to come in from the top, wiggle, and go out the top. So I can come in from the top, hit the 2, and because that's, or hit the negative 1, because that's squared, it's going to bounce and go through the 27 down through the 1, and then up and level out at the cubic, and then take off. So that's step 3, graphing the denominator. I'm sorry, great. step 2, graphing the denominator. Once I've graphed the denominator, I can move on to step 3, and I can graph the reciprocal. We're going to graph 1 over x minus 1 times x minus 3 cubed times x plus 1 squared. And the nice part is we can use the big little principle to help us out with that. We'll be a little more to scale. What I know is wherever there is an x-intercept, on the reciprocal, those are going to translate into vertical asymptotes. So I've got a vertical asymptote at 1, negative 1, sorry, a vertical asymptote at positive 1, and a vertical asymptote at positive 3. Then, if I look at the divisions, if I just kind of split it up here in green. The first section, we see the graph is positive, and it's going to get closer and closer to zero, which means we're going to go positive and get closer to closer to infinity. The second section has a point at 27. Its reciprocal is 1 over 27. We can see we start at zero, get bigger, to the point, and then get smaller to zero. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to start at infinity, get smaller to the point, and then get bigger to infinity. Next part's going to start at zero, go down to a trough, and then back up. So we're going to start all negative at negative infinity, come up to a peak, and then go down. Finally, we're going to go from 0 up, 
will go from infinity down. And that becomes the graph of our reciprocal function. This process took into account a lot of things that we saw this chapter. First thing that we saw this chapter was how do we how do we factor denominators? Well, that was using the rational root theorem that we saw in section 3. To use the rational root theorem, we had to do a lot of synthetic division that we saw in section 2. Once we had that, we could graph the denominator, which is what we saw in section 1. And then, finally, using that information, we could graph the reciprocal. And that gave us our final graph. So it's a really good review problem to take a look at doing the entire uh, process, almost everything we've seen in this chapter. There's a few things that weren't in this problem, but it does synthesize quite a bit of good problems. If you would like to practice one of these as you're reviewing for the test, here's one that you can practice. See if you can graph 1 over x to the 6th plus 3x to the 5th minus 6x to the 4th minus 24x cubed plus 48x plus 32. If you want to do this one with me, set up an appointment with me on Canvas, and I'd love to walk through it with you. Otherwise, you can try it on your own and see how you do. Good luck.